Hello everyone, I wanted to do a quick Houdini tutorial on creating a procedural block and also having it randomize as many times as you need. So let's get started. I'm gonna go into my OBJ mode and just delete everything I've had just so we could start from a fresh scene. Um, just press tab and type geo to create a geometry node and then double click inside here we're gonna make make a box and then just to make the proportions more book sized I'm gonna adjust these settings just just a little bit uh, it doesn't have to be accurate because they will be randomized but just just something like that and then uh, after that we'll create a split node and what I want to do here is split the part that will be the cover from the sheets and because this box will not be edited from here I'm gonna do this just a quick way of uh, just selecting the three faces that will kind of dictate where the, the sheets will be from the cover and press enter now if you if I just make it just a group node I could show you uh, this is what the cover will look like and if I hold alt and copy that and pipe it into the second node on the split node I could call that sheets and as you can see I have sheets and a cover and I could model each one separately uh, while they're still referencing the same box geometry they came from so to make the sheets, I'm just going to divide more edges into here because I want to create a little bit of a procedural randomness in there. So I'm going to press tab and create a divide node and add that into there. So by default it would, it would look like that, but we want to not have convex polygons and here we want to do bricker polygons and if we lower this we start to get edges on this axis so we're going to lower this even more until we get a whole bunch of them then we could add a point jitter node and this will look all crazy because the scale is quite a bit too large So we're going to lower that down and even more, uh, just like something like that, which will create us like kind of the pages. Um, we, you could go into more detail here if you wanted more quality or for us from closer up, but I found this looking pretty good for what I needed this for. And here we could create a merge node just to see what it currently looks like. That's what our book currently looks like. And I'm just gonna flip flip these back by doing that just so then the lines connect but there's no other reason for that. And here we're gonna start working with recover. So I want to I don't want such a hard edge I want to have a kind of a softer rounded area so I'm going to add a poly bevel and here we could just kind of drag that a little bit and add some more divisions uh, so it's starting to look more like a book and if you look here it's not quite quite ready yet so so we're going to do a little more to it. I'm going to add a poly extrude just to add some thickness to our cover and just adjust the distance a little bit. Maybe something like that. And make sure in your 
poly extrude, you go output back. So it looks like that. Um, so it's starting to look kind of what I want, but I did want to make the sheets a little bit smaller. So I'm going to add a transform node right here. And this will just will let me scale the sheets by just a little bit, just to kind of have them on the inside. Just something like that. And I, I don't like how there's a gap here. So what I could do is kind of move them in a bit. Oops, actually I'll just, I'll just increase them by a little bit on the scale and then slide it in. Just like that. It still sticks out a bit, but we're going to fix that in a moment. Um, and to fix that, we could use Boolean. So if we add a Boolean node here and connect it to here, you will see that you still get the edges, but we're getting like a nicer cut here. So the way we could just kind of get rid of that is just to copy this poly extrude to the side uh, that it, so it could be used in the boolean and here we could simply just extrude it a bit thicker so you could see that it'll, it'll definitely cut give us a nice nice clean cut there so our sheets are pretty well made and if we go back to this poly extrude and this merge here, you can see that we now have a book that fit. That, that feels pretty nice. And I want to chamfer the edges on, on this cover as well, so I'm going to add another poly bevel. Just like that. And just add a little bit of an amount and make sure you check the exclusions and ignore flat edges and kind of bring that up till you get to there. And that pretty much covers like how to, how to model the book itself. And I'm just gonna put a color node on here as well, just to kind of see the cover a bit better compared to the pages. Um, so that covers like the very basic of modeling the book, but we also want to randomize it and um, that will take a little more work. So to do that, I'm going to create a for each point loop. And uh, in here, I'm going to put a copy stamp in the middle. And I'm going to put this book into this value and this into this value. And then here, I'm going to just make a new object. And this will just be our scatter object that will uh, control how the book copies. So I'm going to just put a line into here and increase the length, adjust the number of points. And as you can see, our book is getting copied, but it's not randomized yet. And to randomize it uh, requires a little bit of just typing in a line of code, but it's, uh, it's something that you should really keep in your back pocket and remember even if you don't know scripting. Uh, this will just let you randomize any uh, attribute above this copy stamp using uh, using this um, this node, node these nodes here. So to start uh, click at the block begin node and, and create a meta import node. Click this button right here. And this will just create 
a node that will let you fetch the data of how many times this book gets copied and then each time that data will return a value and then you could use that to randomize a book on each copy. Um, so we're just going to rename this to something a lot shorter uh, so that we could reference it easier with code. And now um, you just want to pick which values would you want to randomize. So for this one I just put a transform node here. And if you're wondering why my transform nodes are blue, it's just uh, if you press Control C or C and you press Control while clicking on one of the colors, it will just change your node colors forever by default. Okay, so I want to randomize the scale on X, Y, and Z. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, and also on rotation on the Y axis. So to do that, to do that, we're gonna type in this code, detail, and this is a code that Houdini knows. It's not any anything I've made. So we're gonna type detail. And as you can see, it auto-completes for you uh, once it could find what you're most likely looking for. And uh, just don't worry about understanding this too much now. Just I would just copy it and just slowly, slowly understand as you go along. You don't have to know this right now. And we're going to type iteration comma zero. Um, just like that, and that will, that will, what that will do is each time, each time this value returns a new number, it will scale it by that much. So right now it's not random yet. Um, and this is zero, so it's going to scale it to the zero um, amount. So what we want to do is using, but it is giving us a random seed. Each number is unique, and that's what we could use for randomization. So here we could type in rand for random, and then put brackets around this what we typed. Just like that, and you see you have a randomized scale on the X, which then you could just copy this and paste it to a different axis, a different axis, and even on the rotation. Uh, the rotation you won't see it do, do as much because it's only ra moving things by small values. Um, so now what we want to do is control how much the values get randomized and to do that we could do a fit code so we just type fit01 and that just means we're gonna fit the range between 0 and 1 and we're gonna put the randomized code in brackets and here we're gonna I'm just gonna fit it between 0.8 and 1.2. Uh, any numbers could work here, just play around with it. I used these numbers and just kind of picked what felt good at the time I was making this. So I did that and it will it will stay within that range and be random. And uh, we could just take this and copy it here on the Y and copy it on the Z. Um, the only problem with that is now they're all using the same seed. So X, Y, and Z is scaling evenly and we want a new seed. So here we could just type plus and add any random number and that will create us a unique seed. And the, the, what's important is the, all these have a unique random number. It doesn't matter what the number is.
and that way they're unique on X, Y, and Z independently of each other. And then we're going to also copy this and paste this into rotation. Except the values in rotation, we don't want it to be from 0.8 to 1.2. We want it to be 0 to 360. Or maybe you don't want it to go all the way around. So maybe 180 is OK. Actually, so actually let's do something even smaller. Just like that. And it's really good just to write down this code and just use that on anything you do because it's very handy. And here we're just going to copy that. And we're gonna, we could also paste it into our color. I'm gonna make this from zero to one. Just like that, and they're black and white because they're using the same seed. And if we adjust the seed to any random number, um, you could get different color variables. And you don't have to go 0 0.1, you could go 0.5 on the red, so that you have less red overall in your books. And if you go back to your line here, you could increase the amount of points, increase the height. You could even just replace this line with a polygon mesh sphere. And you just have a big pile of random books. Thank you for listening and that's the tutorial. Bye.